Hey guys, it's Meme, and today I'm going to show you how to get the look and the feel of machine embossing without the machine to emboss. So I love texture on the back of cards, and not everybody can afford an embossing machine. So today we're going to fake it till we make it. So the way this video is going to play out is I'm going to show you how to make the textured um, background, and then I'm going to fast forward with music, let you watch me turn that into a card. Okay, so let's start with this idea. This is so easy and a lot of these are out of my comfort zone, but here we go. Let's talk about the easiest way to get texture in your background with no effort. Ready? Watch this. Just do this. It's so cool. It works. Just crinkle this card sock up. Now, this piece is a four and a quarter by five and a quarter piece that will fit on a card in the back, right in the background. So, I'm going to crinkle, crinkle, crinkle. And I really, really, really want to crinkle it. Like, you could even, like, sit on it. <laughs> roll it with a rolling pin. I don't know, do something like that. But I want a lots of crinkles in it. And I really want it to kind of change its texture because it'll kind of give that leather look. Notice that I started with like a creamy color, like a crafty creamy color. Look how cool this looks. Okay, now let's roll it out. And I'm going to take my, I say roll it out. Let's squish. I'm going to take my little tool here and just kind of do this number. Don't worry too much about all of the wrinkles and the lifts and stuff like that because we'll glue it down to our page and it'll be fine. All right, so step one is crinkle, crinkle, crinkle. Now look, that is beautiful all in and of itself. So you don't really have to do anything else. This is one texture, but let's elevate it. So I'm going to use my little ink catcher here and we are going to drag you know i love to ink drag right this is some vintage photo now ink dragging is a great way to get the look and feel of texture too but if you do it on something like this watch what happens see how it starts to pick up in those areas it's so beautiful how it does this and i'm just going to do one pass to start well i need to get that piece i missed see that that is one crinkly pass See it? It's very wet because that's a brand new vintage photo pad. But to show you the difference, so here's this side versus this side. See? There's still texture there, but look how cool it looks when we do something like this. Now let's do it heavier, okay? I want to step it up. So let's go even heavier. Look how gorgeous this gets. It literally looks like leather. The more ink you apply, the more it will look like leather. I'm literally the more you apply, like I could go more and more. I think I'm going to stop there because I want a little bit of that background to show. Now this will have to dry because like I said, that's a brand new juicy ink pad. Look how wet it is. I haven't had a new one of those in years. So isn't that beautiful? All right. That is one way to get texture without an embossing folder. So while I was playing with this one, I had an idea because it's still so wet. I'm going to take I'm not wanting to touch it too much. I'm going to take this brush that I have that blends colors together, and I'm going to play with some of that wet ink and work it around in and really knock that back to look more like leather. When the sh Until the ink dries, the shine that I had on there was really going to make it not look like it, but watch what's happening. Just working that color in. This is my kind of thing. I love to work with the background of cards. I don't do that a lot in videos with you guys because I think you guys want to see all the new, modern, these and that's and the others, but this has been around forever and I think it's so cool. So just using that little um, blendy brush, let me get that little hair out of the way. Look at this. Now, wait till you see it all turn into a card. Mm -hmm.
So there you go, way number one to fake like you have a bunch of embossing folders or a leather style embossing folder. I love how this turned out and here's the reason. I've said this before, I'm trying to push myself out of my comfort zone. This is very not my style, but I like how it turned out. Now think about this, how easily can we turn this masculine? So easy, but I love the mixture of the rugged with the floral. I think that looks so pretty and you could send this to anybody. And I just did a simple thanks because these are kinds of cards that I make ahead of time and I don't know what I'm gonna use them for and I just wanna be able to have them in my stash and I love it. So there is technique number one. Let's do number two. Okay, technique number two, we're gonna start with stamping. I know that sounds weird that we're gonna start with stamping on a textured background, but you'll see what happens. Okay, so I'm gonna use a stamp set that my friend Brenda drew. It's called Brenda's Botanicals. You can see that I'm going kind of fall theme today. I think this will be beautiful. Notice I'm using one of my little Memento Dew Drops, and that is because I want to ink this in color, but I also want to color with alcohol markers. So I'm using the color Espresso Truffle, and I'm going to stamp this in the corner down here, just kind of low in the corner. I'm just really wanting the edge decorated. And you can see that's why I um, put my little mat behind it because my stamp's hanging off a little bit. And honestly, I'm not looking for this perfect image. Perf, I wanted it to be kind of rustic. I guess rustic is my word lately. So I wanted it to be a little bit distressed. All right, so there's one. And from the same stamp set, she has this little corner piece that's so pretty that she drew. And I want to put that in the top corner. Let's use the right part of the pad there. I'm going to ink this up. Again, use an espresso truffle. Just not wanting to do black. I just didn't want it to be quite so harsh. And I want to tell you about this technique. When you're making texture in the background, you can play and do anything you want. There is no rules. It is just right. All right, I'm going to turn this this way and kind of bring it into this corner like so. Notice I turned my card up. That's just so I could get to it easier to stamp. So see how we have these pretty kind of patterns in the corners. Isn't that beautiful? I think that's going to be so cool. All right, let's now do the embossing part. All right, so now we are to our scoreboard. Now, so many of you ask me, why do you have that line drawn down the middle of your scoreboard? Here's why. If I want to diagonal score, I can match up my corners and make sure I'm on the same score line this way and I can diagonal score. And that's what I'm gonna to do today. But what I wanna do is turn this over because I want my lines to come out the front. So I wanna score from the back, okay? So I'm gonna start here and I wanna show you a couple of things you can do, all right? First and foremost, I don't think I'm gonna use this one. I think I'm gonna use my ball tool on my little embossing tool. I wanna to show you something. You don't have to score all the way down, okay? You can start up here in the top, and when you're doing this diagonal, do you see how I'm kind of starting to the middle and pushing up? That's so I can get a good pull down um, on that corner without having to squish it, you know? So I'm gonna come down, but I'm only gonna go about like that, and I'm just gonna kind of stop. And you're like, what, why are you doing that? Trust me. At the bottom, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna come up, but I'm just gonna kind of go like that and not let them meet, all right? Then over here, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna skip two lines, and I'm gonna get myself started, and I'm gonna come down, not as long as that one, just a little bit different there, just slightly under, and then skip two lines and go a little shorter this time too, and then skip two lines and maybe go a little longer this time. Like it really doesn't matter. Just play because we're just creating texture. But you notice I'm going every other line, like I'm skipping a score line, and I'm just building texture in that corner. Again, over here. Oh, I went too far. It won't matter. I will not stress about that. Y'all just need to know me. I'm not going to stress and I will keep going. So we're just adding some different kinds of texture, like so. Now I'm gonna come down here and do the bottom while I've got it here in the same kind of way. Now, think about this. My pattern underneath, my stamp underneath, is um, kind of going right here. I don't know if you can see that, but I want my score mark to extend out past the stamp just a little bit so you can really see what I'm doing. All right, and I'm gonna go just until I feel like I've kind of worked myself off the page there a little bit. Now let's do this side. Now this is just the pattern I chose to use for this card. You can do so many different patterns using your, your scoreboard and your embossing tool. And also you can freehand this. I'll show you that in just a second. Not as the actual technique, but I'll show you. Okay, so do you see this? So now inside of, there we go. Now inside of my image, I've got this kind of embossing started. Well, we're gonna keep going. I wanna keep doing it. I want that to run all the way off the page. And I can lay it right back where I was and I can just keep going. And that's what's really cool too, is you can flip this over and look because you know how to line it up on your scoreboard, right? 
All right, every other one is what I'm kind of doing. I want to extend that off the page. I'll do this side the same, and then we'll get right back together so you don't have to watch me do this over and over. So now if I come back over to the front, I want to get this where you can see it again. See those score lines? Isn't that neat? Does this not look like already that I have used an embossing folder that had kind of the open middle? It does, right? But now I want to show you something else we can do. So that's doing it on this angle. Now I'm going to turn it and we're going to hatch it. We're going to do a cross hatch. Same situation, okay? All you want to do is come back doing this same movement. So I'm going to start in this corner and I'm going to come down and I'm going to skip every other one. And wherever they cross over, they cross over. We're just going to pretend that this is an embossing folder that was created and we're using it. And notice how I'm not going very deep. You can go deeper. You can do some, you know, longer down, shorter. It doesn't matter. This is your folder you're creating. All right, you can see it on the back side as well. You can do it this way if you want to. I'm going to flip this over so you can see this. See that? How we're starting to kind of get this cross hatch. Let me get the light where it'll show you really well. I'll get it. There it is. See how we're starting this cross hatch? Love that. It just gives the look of an embossing folder without having one. All right, I'm going to do it all the way around. We're doing the same thing we do on the other side, and we'll get right back together. Now, I'm going to try to bring this up and show you. Do you see what we've done here? We've just created this sort of, this semi embossing folder look. You see that? I love embossing folders because you can get all this texture that kind of leaves those open spaces in the middle. I want you to be able to see the cross hatching. Try to get it there where you can. But I love this idea because you get the look of it without doing it. Let me flip this over and see if you see it better. Ah, you can really see it better here. So you see kind of the cross hatching I created. On the other side, you can see it and feel it in real life. But here, and see how we kind of left this space open in the middle? I love that. And it's just beautiful. And I think it's the perfect place to put a sentiment right inside there where we did not get any texture. Let me do that. For my sentiment, I'm using stamps from the same set, and this one is called um, Brenda's Botanicals, don't forget. And I'm going to use this sentiment that says, Autumn is better with friends. And I'm going to use this section where we don't have any scoring to be where it lives. So, Autumn. I'm using brown ink, by the way. It's pine cone from Versaclair. Is better. Is better with, I should say is better with, and then I'm gonna do friends right down here. Very different, I went on an angle, probably shouldn't have, looking back I don't love it, but we're gonna go with it because we haven't done the coloring yet. So now I'm gonna color. So I did a I just a tiny little bit of coloring with some color pencils. I did not want it to be solid. I wanted it to feel sketchy like um, Brenda's stamp set does. But now I want to do something else. This is where I could mess up. So you might want to stop here because the, the texture is beautiful on the card. I just don't feel like you guys are getting to see it very well. There it is. That looks good. Okay, so I'm going to show you. What you can do is you can sort of drag or sort of ink this as well to really bring out that texture around the edge. See that? And that beautiful, that kind of waffle weave. Don't do a lot of ink, especially if you have a brand new ink pad like me. Work some of that ink off on your surface there. And you can go back to it and ink up from it, but look how this is bringing out that fake embossing folder. Isn't that cool? Look, I even have a mistake and it doesn't matter. <laughs> it does not matter. It's so beautiful when you see this sort of lattice texture that we just created with our scoreboard. Now listen, I've done a lot of this kind of thing. I have videos on my channel where I use my scoreboard for lots of different things like this. You can do argyle patterns. You can do anything. You can even take 
your cardstock and put it on your mouse pad and just scroll around and make pattern. It's a great way to look like we have an embossing folder without. This neat. I'm going to keep going in a little bit deeper because I want you to see all that we did because I don't want it to be wasted for you. So anywhere there's some of that texture, I'm just going to hit it so you can see it. So cool. Love how that turned out. Let me put this on a card base and that's a card. So that's card number two. Let's do one more. So for me, this technique or technique number three is kind of a scrap buster. Okay. So what you'll do is pick out a punch, any punch you've got. I really love this hexagon punch and you're just going to punch from your scrap bin. This one's not quite big enough. Let's go this way. And you just want to get as many of these as you can. Honestly, I don't know how many I'm going to need. I'm going to try to get probably, I don't really know. Let me punch a bunch and then I'll tell you. <laughs> But I tell you all the time, if you have scraps, the kind that you want to keep, the size of scrap you want to keep are kinds that can be punched. If they're small enough to be stamped on or to be punched on, hang on to those. Now, this cardstock I'm using here is a very thick cardstock. I'll actually tell you, it's Nina, and we did a Make It Kit um, for our one of our online events we have coming up. And these were some off cuts from that. And I put them in my scrap bin, and I thought, I'm going to use these for something. And here's the perfect Perfect place. Now they're big enough to use for stamping on and die cutting and stuff like that. But I just think this will be cool to show you another way to fake it till you make it. So I have a stack of these hexagons. It may not be enough, we will see. But the idea is this, this is my card base. I've got a top opening card base that I just created for some cardstock. What I wanna do is place these around like so and you can see that they are the same color, that's okay, because what we're gonna do is add texture by gluing these and building them up. I think I'm gonna do three of them together, and you can see then that it will make them a little thicker and build them up, so when we glue them to our card, they will create texture on the page, all right? So I'm gonna do that on this card and let you kinda just watch me do it, and we'll get right back together. Okay, so let me show you how I'm gonna start. I've got them done. I made them three pieces thick. Honestly, I think I could have done two because I'm using this thick Nina, but it is what it is. We're gonna go with it. I like a heavy card. I think that's nice. So I'm going to sort of eyeball the center here. You can be very specific if you want. You can measure and do all that stuff. I'm gonna put this down and then look at it and see if I feel good about it. It needs to go over a little bit. Feel pretty good about that. So you wanna get one set in place, all right? Then I'm going to go above it with my second one, and I'm just going to put glue where it's needed. I don't think I need glue all the way at the top because this is going to hang off a bit, and I'm going to skip a space between, and I'm going to try to mimic that space all the way around the card. So just place that there and glue that one down. Let's go underneath. You really wouldn't have to do the whole card front. You could just do parts of it. Like if you just wanted to do a border down one side, you could have scooted this over and done that. But I just kind of want this to be the whole front of the card because I really am just showing you how to add texture this way. It does not have to be the whole front of the card. So there's that one. I got way too much glue. I'm going to wipe that off so it doesn't get on my brand new mat. All right. And then I'm going to continue by going to the side. So again, I don't need glue over the whole thing. Some of this is going to hang off the edge. And so I'm going to try to keep that same distance between and see how I'm leaving that and I'm creating that texture. It's really kind of neat. It's kind of neat. Keep going. You can do this with anything. You don't have to do this pattern that matches up like this. Imagine if you have, like if you have a cutting machine, like a Cricut cutting machine or something like that, and you cut out like holly berries or something and you layered them a couple times and laid them out, that would be so pretty. Anything you want to do just play. What I really love about this, 
is that all of this came from my scrap bin. Even the card base. <laughs> I found that, that piece big enough to cut the card base. And all of this is from my scrap bin. I never, I did not have to go anywhere else to get um, card stock. So that was cool. Now you're noticing, but Mame, this is not covering the whole page. It's not yet. We're going to. I'll show you how. All right. What we're going to do now is cut what hangs off. Okay. So I'm going to grab some scissors. And what is hanging off the edge, I'm going to slice off. Now, I like I told you, this cardstock I'm using is too thick, but it'll be cool. So I'm going to cut that one and then cut this one away. You might want to wait until it is good and dry to do this part. I'm kind of rushing it. I'm going to go back where I was. I should, I should be using my longer scissors, but I just grabbed these. There we go. So there's that side. That's kind of cool. Now let's do the rest. All right, so you can see that texture starting to build. In these other spots where I do not have the pieces, I'm gonna use these little off cuts to finish it off. See that? So you'll just add a little glue, and I'm gonna add this little guy here, and I'll just trim it off the edge like I did with the others. So check that out. You see that texture that we built? Now this just needs a sentiment and an image. Mm -hmm. And there you go, that's adding texture without an embossing folder. I think that one looks awesome. If I did this one again, like I said, I was using thick offshoots from my scrap bin. I would only do these two thick. You don't really need them three. You can see how thick I made the front of the card, but it is really nice. So there you go, three techniques. Let's look at the cards all together. So technique number one is the faux leather look. Imagine doing this in different colors. You don't have to do it in the brown. You could do it in gray. Do it in lilac. Wouldn't that be beautiful in a purple? Or whatever you're using it for, it would be absolutely gorgeous. One thing I want to point out is one thing that really makes this feel more like leather is wrapping that around so it kind of feels like a belt. Isn't that neat? And then our faux embossing folder. They're so easy to do. Any design you want, any way you want it. I love how that one turned out. And lastly, another faux embossing folder using just punches. Any shape, you could do this with stripes, you could do this with circles, you could do it with anything and it would be so cute. So that is faking it till you make it. I love this kind of thing. This is how I used to craft way back in the day when I didn't have a lot of supplies, I had to figure it out. And this is some of the ways I did it. These are not, you know, groundbreaking new techniques. They're just what I've done in my own um, crafting to give me the looks that I want. So I hope you enjoyed that. Let me know if you like this style video. I have lots of these kind of things that um, are just kind of floating around in my head and I would love to share them with you if you want to see them. Let me know by giving the video a thumbs up. That lets me know you enjoyed this video. Also, share the video out there for folks to see it. You never know who might need some techniques like these. And all the supplies I use today are linked in the description below. Be sure to give us a, thumb, a subscribe as well as that thumbs up and click the bell so you'll get notifications when I do another video. Thanks so much for being here today, guys. And until next time, bye now.